and welcome back to Dukas Copy TV. Now, due to the Eurozone crisis, European pension funds have been cutting their exposure to equities. I'm joined by Mike Cody from DeVere Group, the independent financial advisory group, to explain just what this means for UK pensions. Mike, thank you for joining me today. Morning. Mike, can you explain to our viewers exactly what is the European pension crisis? Sure, I think you've got two problems right now. You've got the first and primary problem that has been around for a number of decades, and that's very much whereby you have a, an ageing population, you have a retirement population that's living longer due to medical advancements, and then coupled that with a, a working population that becomes smaller and smaller. Okay? And we've known about these facts for, for many years. Okay? But now we have to couple that with a European pension crisis okay, in terms of what's going on in the economic world okay, within the European Union. Okay? And what we've seen, if we look at some basic statistics, is up until recently we've seen uh, four employees for every retired person. And by 2060, we expect that to grow, okay, or to diminish down to two to one. Okay, so you've got a much smaller working population, okay, looking after a much bigger uh, retired population. And I think if you look at the UK, and this is evident across uh, the EU, um, the European, uh, sorry, the UK uh, deficit is around about 312 billion now. Um, if you look at various different statistics, um, we estimate that uh, somewhere in the region of 86% of all UK schemes are now currently underfunded. Uh, and if you look at the liabilities versus assets that those schemes have across the EU, up until last year, we would estimate that 98% assets versus liabilities in terms of what does uh, a company need to have in their pension scheme in order to pay out their employees in future generations. And we reckon within the last 12 months, we've seen that re reduced down to a 77%. Okay, so a big, big reduction over the course of just a 12-month period. And inevitably, what is starting to happen now, as we've seen various governments now starting to look back at different ways in which they can cut back on their pension liability, uh, and the obvious ways to do that is very much cut the benefits, um, but at the same time, make people work just a little bit uh, older. <laughs> and I think once those um, gates have been opened, there's no reason that goes from 67 to 68 to 69, and uh, you know, who, who knows where in many decades to come where that, where that age will eventually end up. And just looking specifically at the UK, what has the Eurozone crisis, what effect has this had on UK pensions specifically? Yeah, I think the problems that exist in the UK are very similar to those that exist uh, right across the European Union, um, predominantly caused by um, guilt yields. Okay, So what we've seen in terms of getting ourselves out of today's mess is various different governments, and if we take the UK as a classic example, the easiest way to do that is what's called quantitative easing. Okay, An easy description of that is to print money. Okay. As we print money, what happens is the yields of uh, secure locations such as the UK inevitably means those returns go down. Uh, and over the last few weeks, we've seen those yields start to reduce down to 1.92, which means a great deal of the returns that are coming from uh, pension funds or for those people entering into retirement uh, are very, very low. So some people estimate that the returns in pension funds over the last three years, particularly within corporate schemes, uh, have been completely wiped out. So it's, it's disastrous right now. Couple that with, at the same time, what's going on in Brussels right now, um, and we've seen what's coming, uh, Solvency 2. Solvency 2 requirements basically means that uh, the European government are making people uh, invest in a more cautious approach. So, okay, you have a deficit, which by definition now means you need to be more careful with the money that you have left, and again, of seeing more of an over-purchasing guilt. So again, we estimate that a 20% reduction will incur over the next few years, again, uh, as, as governments make uh, pensions or company pension schemes buy more guilt within their, within their portfolios. So what is likely to be the long-term outcome from this quantitative easing? Okay, I think what we have to look at is very much, very much over the years there's been three different types of pension scheme. You've got your state pension, okay, which is that that the government gives you, okay. You've got those people that rely on their corporate schemes or their company schemes, and inevitably we've seen those uh, people that are saved personally on a personal basis. I think what is safe to say now is those that rely on state pensions, okay, would be foolish. Um, those people that have relied on company schemes, again, we can see clearly that the deficits exist right across the EU. Um, there's huge problems in terms of what companies now owe or are owed or going to be owing to their uh, employees. And again, I think that puts more um, incentive, more obligation in terms of personal savings. Um, and I think, you know, in 10 years' time, I think 20 years' time, 30 years' time, people will look back on this era uh, and very much be taught in history lessons as to the era when people used to look after you in retirement. Okay, Mike, so what exactly needs to be done to plug this pension gap? I think people need to embrace it far more than perhaps they've ever done before. I think we live in a world where 
uh, the importance of living today in the most uh, high society lifestyle that we can get uh, is ever evident. Um, and I think people just need to, first of all, uh, save more. Um, people need to have a, a much higher level of urgency than ever before. And I think people need to take the, you know, the head out of the clouds in terms of the fact that the state and, the, and their employees will no longer look after them to the full extent of which perhaps they would uh, first thought. Um, I think if you look at you know, a 45-year-old gentleman okay, that wants to retire at 65, you know, that's actually a very small period of time. You know, we can put that in paydays very easily. Okay? And if we look at 240 paydays before now and that person's retirement, it's not a great deal of time. So any, any sensible financial planner will look at making sure that a client has enough money for today to do the things that they want to do, the things that are important to them, but at the same time being careful and conscious and motivated as to their future because tomorrow does come. Uh, and when people retire, nowadays it can be 30, if not 40 years, and that's a long time to be without an income. Um, so yeah, a high, a high degree of importance uh, needs to be stressed in this area. Okay, so for our viewers watching now, if they don't feel like they're doing enough to fund their pension, what, what should be their first step, do you think? Okay, first one to get into the head is act now. Okay, stop procrastinating. Um, again, you know, I reiterate the urgency side of it. And I think when you work with a, a good financial advisor, so for example, somebody like the De Beer Group, we very much sit down with our clients, find out where they are today, where they want to be in the future, and then our job is to move them between those two points as easily as we know how. Um, it's a proven that if you work with a good financial advisor, okay, you're statistically much more likely to get to your goals, okay, um, because we can work alongside them, we can share our experiences, and more than, more than anything else share, okay, and make sure that we have a true goal in place. Okay, Mike, well, thank you very much for coming into the studio to talk to us today. It's some great advice for our viewers. So that's all from Duke's Copy TV today, but click back for the website for more interviews and updates. Goodbye.